Greetings, YouTube. So I've been in a sort of a Star Trek mood as of late. Um, I rewatched the original with Chris Pine with commentary. Got a Blu-ray for a dollar at a yard sale. Um, and I've got, finally gotten around to watching Into Darkness. Um, and I also picked up the last one, um, Beyond, um, at, at, a, at a flea market for a buck. So I'll be watching that one soon. And Into Darkness is... So boilers here, a retelling of the Khan storyline. So the, the elephant in the room here, the, the white elephant in the room, I should say, is that they, ha they had a white actor, one of the whitest white people that has ever walked out of white town, play a man of color. Now, in the original, it was not actually played by an Indian person, but at least it was played by a person of color. He could at least reasonably pass physically for a person from East Asia. Okay? You could you could buy that. Not the guy they had played this time. Cover matches on his name, I think is? I can't remember. Because he's way too white. And could someone explain to me why the director either allowed him to or required him to to enunciate Every word he said like this. Because that's how he spoke. Everything through the entire movie. Or at least the impression I had. It was horrible. He also doesn't look like a super soldier. Whereas Ricardo Multivon, particularly in the movie, looked like a super soldier. He looked like a guy that could have kicked Captain America's ass. They just made him look tough by him not taking damage from punches or picking up a, a device, which frankly, I don't think he could pick up a weapon that even if he was a super soldier, because he doesn't have the muscle mass. So yes, he was not believable in that role. However, it was a nice twist that they brought him out of his, 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 his cold sleep because they knew he was a genius, a military genius, also a sociopath, but a genius. And they needed that genius, at least the guy who brought him out felt that he needed a genius, because he wanted to be a pro-military leader so that the Confederation would be protected in the coming war with the Klingons. Now, I've always viewed the Federation as a military organization. I viewed the original series very much as a story of a submarine out wandering through the world doing military missions or and occasionally a humanitarian mission. And that was all well and good. But we're in the 21st century. We should be at least more accepting of the fact that, yes, this is a pro-military mission with some very horrible undertones of colonialism. Um, and I think they sort of addressed that in some ways. At least they said the pro-military stuff is bad, even though there's going to be a point in the future where they're going to need that pro-military. So I don't think they really bought their own hypocrisy, but that's different. But the basic storyline here is that you have the Enterprise and its crew decide they discover a planet doing a scan. They say, oh, a volcano's going to erupt. It's going to wipe out this civilization, so we should do something. Awesome, okay? You decided to break the protocol of the, uh, uh, of, you know, no contact, you know, you don't, do, don't do that, but let's face it. In the original series, Kirk broke that kind of protocol every Tuesday. It wasn't a big deal. Why he felt that he and Dr. Bones, or Dr. McCoy, had to go to the planet as a distraction, I don't know. That makes no sense. Zero sense. It just threw people into a scene who otherwise wouldn't have been in a scene. Now, why did they send a shuttle down who dropped a small device, not much larger than the chair I'm sitting in, actually smaller than that, I think Spock carried it. About the size of a briefcase or something. Why did they drop him physically into a volcano? Right now, in 2017, we have remote vehicles that would have gotten that friggin' device to where it had to be. The Federation's anti-technology, anti-biotech -bio philosophy, their, their, their horribly anti-transhuman -tra uh, stance bugs the crap out of me. Okay? So they could have just dropped something from orbit, never gotten near this place, done it at night so no one would ever have seen it, saved those people and been on their way. Yes, they would have broke protocol. They would have gotten yelled at. 
but they wouldn't have exposed themselves to this foreign uh, culture. They wouldn't have like, given them a new a view of what a spaceship looks like, which they put underwater. Inter interesting, but utterly unnecessary. And of course, the people who saw the ship immediately cast aside their old religion and adopted a new one. That doesn't. That's not how religion works, folks. The leaders just say, don't say, okay, we're going to throw this away and we're going to adopt a new religion. No, they're going to say, this is a sign from our God. And they just fold it right into the existing religion. That's how religion works. Okay? That's how politics works. That's how, that's how culture works. We don't just throw things out completely. We bring them in. We combine them. We adapt. We're like that. And I see no reason to believe that this other race is not just as adaptable and bright as we are. So Kirk gets in trouble, they strip him of his rank. Now that was the point. They felt the need to strip him of his rank. I don't know why. It added nothing. Not one thing was added to this storyline by stripping Kirk of his rank. Yell at him. Tell him he's on double secret probation. Doesn't matter. Stripping him of his rank, absolutely meaningless storyline. It added nothing to the thing. It was just confusing and dumb. Whoever wrote that in there should feel ashamed. Okay, so then we have this convoluted, the guys are no longer, he's no longer captain, people call him captain, I'm not a captain anymore. One, uh, Scotty decides, okay, I want nothing to do this now because you're asking me to carry these, these missiles on board this ship without telling me what they are. There's just a whole lot of things in there I don't think you needed, and they were in there anyway. And it scattered the crew at all, all heck instead of keeping them cooked together as a cohesive unit, which is how they function best in the series. The best storylines were always with the crew working together as a team. We established a team in the first movie with the original remake of Star Trek. And now they broke the team up. Why? It's supposed to create drama? It was just boring. Alright? So there's, there's this, this just, that's just bad writing. Then we have Khan in a ship outside of, 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 of an office building. No one does anything. Nobody notices this ship coming in. There's no defenses of any variety. No warning signs. No no Federation version of airspace control. Nothing like that. He's just able to bring a fighter into the an area and decide to take, his, take, a, take an entire office building out because he wants to kill somebody. All part of his evil plan, which of course was also all part of the plan of the pro-military leader. So they are helping each other whether they know it or not. As part of this whole thing that Khan does, he decides he needs to blow up a facility. We think it's a library or of, of some kind of archive, but it's actually a secret base, okay? And to do this, he saves a small child to convince her father to plant a device in, the, in, in, in this, ar in this ar archive, okay? How does he cure this child? With his blood. That's it. Khan's blood, all by itself, saves a child. Guess what, Federation? Fuck you! You're preventing this kind of technology from being used in everyday life? You're letting ch a child die because you're anti-technology, anti-biotech, anti-transhumanism? That's bullshit! His blood, all by itself, just zoop, into a device, into her, bingo, she's cured. And her father buys into this. And what does he do in kind to pay back Khan for saving his daughter? He kills 48 other people! So you're telling me that you consider your daughter's life worth so much that you're willing to sacrifice your own, your own call, but you're going to kill 48 other people. Also bullshit. Crappy writing and a horrible moral lesson to the world at large. I'm going to kill... 48 people to save my daughter. The writing in this film is not good. And this whole film is like this. The whole film. Khan is eventually put back into freeze. Captain uh, Kirk, once again, is Captain Kirk. The crew is brought back together. But there's just holes in this. Not just the plot itself, because there are. But there's holes in this because the team wasn't together. It was spread out and diffused. And as anybody that ever done any role-playing knows, you don't divide the party. So this is a weak film. A very weak film. 
especially in comparison to the first one, which was a lot of fun. It had dumb in it, don't get me wrong. But it wasn't as dumb, it wasn't as racist, it wasn't as whitewashing. It wasn't as poorly written and executed as Into Darkness was. Now, I, when I saw the trailer for Beyond, I shook my head in dismay because it had someone on a dirt bike. So I don't have a lot of hope that Beyond's going to be good. But I would be thrilled if it were better than Into Darkness. Now, it was still cool to watch a Star Trek movie. The technology is awesome. The individual acting roles, for the most part, other than talking like this, were pretty good. And Carl Urban is awesome as Bones. Just awesome. He was the perfect role for this. He's perfect for Dread. He's perfect for this. So the only thing I got I, I got out of this divorce was my Bones. Awesome line. Which Carl Urban himself came up with. So, I was disappointed with Into Darkness. I'm hoping that Beyond is better. I may do a video about Star Trek, the original, because so I have some more thoughts about it. But tell me, did you like Into Darkness? Did all the flaws I've mentioned just be, were not of an issue for you? Did you just gloss over them and enjoy the thing? I know there are people out there who could just sit in a the theater, turn their brain off, and let the colors and the sounds wash over them. I am not that guy. So let's talk about Star Trek and Into Darkness. Because I still think the universe that they've created is interesting. Let's hope they can do more with it.